releasing from the coffee. Um, the bloom is always going to, we're always going to use twice the amount of water that we did our initial dose. So I used 30 grams of coffee, so I'm going to pour 60 grams of water into it. I'm going to start right along the outside. Also, I'm going to like just check my watch for the time. I'm going to let the bloom happen for about 45 seconds. So I look at my watch or I start the timer on my phone or whatever thing you want to use there. Never buy a timer because you probably already own a phone and you probably spent a lot of money on that phone that has a perfectly good timer. So don't waste your money on a timer. I've always been confused when people like recommend buying timers because I don't know anyone without cell phone these days. When, it, when mine broke, I didn't buy it. Yeah, absolutely. So you pour it around for the So beer. yeah, what we're going to do, we're going to start off and I'm going to start from the outside and I'm going to pour my way into the center. I'm just going to slowly go around the outside here. What the goal is on this bloom is to first off just get everything nice and evenly saturated. So I want to make sure that there's no dry spots or things like that that are coming up that I can see. And as you can see too, the reason we call it the bloom is like you're seeing these bubbles start to come up. The coffee is rising, it's expanding. That's the gases within the coffee itself being released. And the reason this phase exists for us is because it allows us to get a more like even extraction at the end because it, all those gases in the coffee, if I just started trying to like fill it up with water right away, would end up kind of getting in the way of the water coming in contact with the coffee. So this bloom phase, I allow all those gases to release, which are gonna make the coffee extract a little bit better. Okay, it's been about 45 seconds, so we're not really getting a reaction on the top of our bloom anymore. So I'm gonna start with my second phase. On my second phase, I'm gonna pour it all the way up to 150 grams. Um, I'm going to start in the center from here on out, and I'm just going to slowly spiral out to the outside, trying to avoid actually pouring any water down the paper filter. And then once I get to the outside, I'm just going to slowly spiral back into the center. And I'm up to 150, 155, it's close enough. Like, you don't have to always be like, oh crap, I'm at 151, I ruined the coffee. Like, that's not... That's just simply not the pace. The so first phase was up to how much? Weight? So the first phase we pour in 60 grams. Up to 60 grams. The second phase we go up to 150. And then from here on out, we're just gonna add 100 more grams at a time. So the okay. third phase that I'm about to pour. And I'll always know, I'll, it's not always 45 seconds. The idea is once the, once the, the coffee has dropped about a half inch from the original place that you filled up the water line to is when you wanna start pouring again. And so again, I'm slowly pouring all the way to the outside, and now I'm working my way back into the center. I'm at 250 now, so I stop. And now I'm gonna wait for it to fall down about a half inch from where it was before. Or even like, as it starts like caving in, just basically you never wanna not have water in there. If it ever gets to the point where you let it dry out completely, it can kind of ruin the brood itself. So you just want to make sure that there's always water up until that final pour when obviously you want all the water to drain through because it can end up harming your brood. So now I'm about a half inch. I want to make sure that there's still a little bit of water when I start pouring the next phase. Again in the center, I start in the center. I work my way to the outside. Once I get to the outside here, I start working my way back in towards the center. And I'm now at 350 grams and I stop. And at this point, all I'm going to wait for it to do is to completely drain. This whole process should take you between three and four minutes. Depending on the coffee, depending on the extraction you're getting, all those little things are gonna play into it. And it's, if you do have a grinder at home and you're trying to figure out like, if it's under extracted or over extracted, time will help you do that as well. Obviously, like I said at the beginning, taste is gonna be the most important thing. But if you are tasting it and you feel like it's a little bit off and you checked your timer and you're like, yeah, it did only brew for, two minutes and 30 seconds, I guess, yeah, it is a little sour. Like now you know because it should have been somewhere between three and four minutes, but it took 30 seconds less. You're like, okay, I can probably go a little bit finer on that. 